we all enjoy the beautiful sounds of music. But how often do we think about what goes into making that music? Recording artist Jean Charbon will be joining me in less than a minute to tell you about that. Later in this program, you'll hear from Scott Kravinsky about opportunities for middle school and high school students who want to pursue a promising career in healthcare. But we begin with music. Jean Charlevoix, welcome to Brooklyn 45. Thank you for welcoming. It's a pleasure. It's good to see you in person. Tell me, what are the first things you think about in making your music? First thing I think about making my music, I guess, is for me to embrace my instrument because I'm not a vocalist. So to me, my music comes through my guitar playing. What and kind of guitar do you what kind of guitar do you play? Bass guitar, rhythm guitar, first guitar? I play lead guitar. Okay. I suppose that's the same as first guitar, right? You could say that, definitely. Okay. How long have you been playing this guitar? Wow. Now I have to calculate. I would say <laughs> roughly a little over 40 years by now. Wow. Wow. You know, in school, we are taught how to read lines of music. Has there been any changes to this standard as how notes are written? No. However, there is a gentleman named Ornette Coleman. He's a jazz saxophonist. He uh, came with his own notation of music. So it, 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 it didn't involve placing the notes on the line or in between the lines. But it was more sort of a, like a wavy kind of motion in terms of how you will approach reading it. But still with ledger lines. So it, it was kind of, when you look at it, you know you were reading some type of notations. But his approach was different. On that Coleman. For students and uh, other people who would love to write music, they're all listening to you. Um, what style of writing do you use? My style of writing? Yes. So maybe uh, what style of music do I write in maybe? Well, let's talk about how do you write your music first of all, and then I'm going to get back to the style of music. Do you okay. write your music on a sheet of paper? Um. Now, the song that I write, my own compositions that I write, because I'm a composer, arranger, guitarist, performer. Uh, some people are able to do all those different things. Some people are not. That's why if you follow the musicians, you could follow someone and you see he's a songwriter. He writes beautiful songs, but he's not really an instrumentalist. Or you could see another musician who's a great instrumentalist, but people write for him. He doesn't write music, you know? But I, I'm, it, it's just like, it just so happened this conversation that you, you, we are tackling together, I fit perfectly for it because I perform, I compose, I arrange. And on, on, even on some rare occasions, I have also written lyrics. You know, but I wouldn't say that I'm a lyricist. Now, the way a composition starts for me, or a song, I have to be inspired. And when you look into the word inspire, it's like you could you could read two words, I N, in, and then spirit. So you you have to be in spirit in the spirit compose yeah you have to be in other words i have songs that i i woke out of a dream with a melody in my head and i'm running from my bed my bed to the instrument and i gotta find those 
few notes, boom, 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 and then I will record it right away. And then there are other songs where I'm, I'm just sitting, noodling around with the instrument and then something can come, come up. And then there are other songs where you could have a more scholastic approach to writing it. You know what I mean? You, 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 you know theories and then you start putting the chord changes together and then you're approaching the notes that are correctly pertain to this, to this group of notes you already have and then you develop it from, from that approach. But there are so many different angles to tackle it down. Mm -hmm. So your inspiration can come when you're sleeping, as you said just now. Uh, do you get any no, no, that was just one okay. That was just a specific occasion. That's not mm -hmm. always how it happens. You could get inspired while you're driving your car. You could get inspired while you're jogging. Mm -hmm. You could get inspired, you know, in so many different situations. So that's what I mean by it. Yeah, it, I it got has you. happened where I woke out of my sleep to write a song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that myself. And I want to talk about the music that you write. Um, what genre of music do you write and perform? Uh, I would say contemporary jazz. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've had I've had songs that were like, you know, pop. They weren't. I mean, I was attempting to write an R&B songs, mm -hmm. and then it became a hit in London. But it wasn't truly R and B. It was kind of a little jazzy R and B, and it sounded like neo neo soul. And it wasn't neo soul, but it became popular. So I guess it became a pop hit. Lay back. Um, I'm not going to ask you if you were laying back when <laughs> you came up with the idea for that song. But where do we hear this lay back? Uh, you could hear it on my website, my personal website, which is shardofone.com, C-H-A-R-D-A-V-O-I-N-E.com, or you could log onto my page on YouTube and search Layback. Okay. And we know that thousands of people will be doing that. Now, your name. You said we can go to the website and look for Shard of One, but I introduced you. I introduce you as Jean. So let's let's correct the pronunciation of your name. You do that. Uh, it's, it's not just the pronunciation of the word. It, it's just like it, my artist name has no gene. There, there's no gene before the shot of one. It's just shot of one. That's it. Okay, shot of one. But especially, I mean, gene comes when you're writing me a check. That's when you don't want to forget. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, your message, your message was just heard by thousands. <laughs> Do you typically have the lyrics first or the music first? Which which is first for you? Very great questions. Let's say you're a poet. You call me, you say, Shalom, I have this poem. It's very touching. Blah, 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 blah. I read it. That poem could inspire me to write the music. So in that instance, the lyrics precede the rest of the song, which is the musical work that I'm going to do. Or I could write a song. I have a song that I've written in my last album called the melody is very poignant. Everybody loved the melody. And now I'm sitting down. I said, this got to be sung by somebody. So I'm in the process of writing the lyrics to Haiti Je Temps. But I want it to be English lyrics, not French lyrics. So the title is going to remain Haiti Je Temps, which means I love you, Haiti but the lyric going to be written in English. So the word, those are two different incidents 
two different facets to writing. The lyrics would come first or the music would come first? Which do you prefer? A great song. It doesn't matter to me. Which <laughs> the end result got to be powerful. You know, you got to make sure the message comes through. Through the mm -hmm. end result. Okay, and it doesn't matter if that message comes to you when you're sleeping <laughs> or if you're on the train. Well, Sam, you like the sleeping part, huh? <laughs> but I have to tell you, it has happened a few times where I was too lazy to get up because I was too sleepy or whatever the reason might have been. And I said, I'm going to get it in the morning. And I get up in the morning. And it's gone. And I, I can't record <laughs> anything. It's, it's all gone. It's all gone. How many songs have you recorded? Wow. I mean, not as many as I would like to, but I think that on YouTube right now, I, I think I'm at 70 something that I have on, on YouTube. Well, that is impressive. That is very impressive. Yeah, I have eight CDs on the market. You can mm -hmm. find them anywhere. But you know, you know where the industry is going right now. I don't think if it's there already, but I think it's almost there. You will no no longer be able to buy a CD. You cannot mm -hmm. buy a download. You have to stream the music. So that's why I have my website available for people who would like to own a CD or would like to download a song and put it in your phone. Because if you're on, uh, on Spotify, for instance, you could create your own playlist on your phone. You save each song you would like to listen to, and then you play it from there. And then you go on Spotify trying to purchase something. I, I'm not even purchasing something is available. And, and you know how much money we get from a stream? 0 0.003. That's like 3% 3, 3 of a penny. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they get a cut out of that too. So what that means is that you need to get 300, 300 streams to make one penny. Let's talk about your band. Okay. The, the name of your band, is it Shard of One? What is it? Shard of One in the Evolution. Okay. Do you, do you play for live performances or you only record your music? Oh, live performance is what I live for. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of my albums are live performances that I recorded. Yeah. What is the favorite, your favorite song of all that you have recorded? It's a song called Teresa. It's also on my website. It's also on the... Uh, on, on, of course, on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Clarissa. And, and the, the reason for that is because as I was rehearsing for one of my albums that I released in 2017, that was right after me and the band, we went to Port-au-Prince, Haiti to play at the Jazz Festival there in 2015. And then when we came back, we decided to stay together as a band. So we start rehearsing for my next CD for about a year. So we played, we uh, recorded nine songs. They were all original compositions of mine. My arrangement, my compositions, and, and those guys putting their, their time rehearsing with me and we got them down and they sounded great. And then the drummer, who is now not with us anymore, he died in 2017, right before the release of the CD, he passed away. And, and I remember a conversation I had with him. His name is Kim Plainfield. He said to me, 
how's the mix and everything else coming along? I said, man, it's sounding great. He said, yeah, so-and-so is doing a great job. He said, I'm quite sure I'm going to get to hear it. I know you're very passionate about getting stuff done the right way. I'm like, yeah. And then a couple of days later, I got the call that he got sick. And then he died within three or four days of that conversation. So the song, Teresa, was his favorite. OK. But that's why I told you that story for, for a reason. Yes. And I just took a, a, a liking to the song after he passed away. Because, you know, when you write songs, they all like they all they are like your children. You're supposed to love them equally. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but, well. So I have a, I have a thing for for that song called Teresa. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. our viewers are going to be watching your programs. They're going to be listening to your music. They're going to be watching your streams. And uh, I want to thank you for being our guest on Brooklyn Forty Five, Gene. Shot of wine. I wanted you to say, Gene. Shot of wine. <laughs> okay, Gene. <laughs> shot of wine. Thank you for being on Brooklyn can I, Forty Five. Can I add something? I wanted to let him know that March twenty seventh, I'll be playing at Jamaica Performing Arts Center. March twenty seventh, twenty twenty four. It's a free concert concert at Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Write the date down, March 20, March 27th, 2024, live at Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Thank okay. you for having me. Well, you are appreciate. welcome. You are welcome. Thank you so much. And now we all can hear a snippet of Teresa. High school and college students often ponder which career path they should take. Well, healthcare plays a critical role in all of our lives, and considering a career path in healthcare offers great opportunities for the development of our workforce. Scott Kravinsky, welcome to Brooklyn 45. Listen, I, I definitely appreciate it. And Sam, it's good to be connected with you again. And uh your whole team, and I think it's fantastic. Well, you have some fantastic information to give to our middle school and high school kids and their parents. What is this educational pipeline initiative that you've been working on? Well, it's funny you said that. Um, it's interesting that I was an educator for over 25 years. I retired about four years ago. And part of what I'm doing right now is I'm redirecting my efforts in terms of helping high school students develop a pathway. Um, I was very fortunate to be connected with um, Senator Spanton, uh, NYU Langon, Assemblyman Mike Riley, and the UFT, and Health Union 1199 to develop this program. And we started this program about three months ago, and we're doing fantastic. Uh, what's great about it is that I've been reaching out to many, many colleges, and part of their issue is how do we recruit high school students? And I've been reaching out to high schools and connecting them with colleges that might be very, very good for them and make a match. The goal right now is we want high school students to go to college, mm -hmm. um, develop degrees in um, the medical field. And what they would do after that is they would actually get a job at NYU Langone, which uh, which I think is fantastic. The bottom line is that what we're doing right now is we're connecting the pieces. And that's something that, you know, and I 
be looking at the program that Eric Adams is doing right now, which is a career development program. And my goal is to be able to not replicate it, but really blend into the program that he has right now. And it's so important as an educator and parent that your child has a chance to create a pathway for themselves. Imagine if you, you know, as a student, you know, what direction do you really want to take right now? Uh, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, any type of occupation. The bottom line is that we're making these things happen with support from out. We have about 20 partners right now, which is uh, which is fantastic. Who are some of these partners? Um, some of the partners right now are Brooklyn College, um, Kingsborough Co College, St. Vincent's College, Fairleigh Dickinson University. We have a lot, a lot of colleagues right now from the Department of uh, New York State Department of Education. We have Fairleigh Dickinson University. We have Health Union 1199. We have Senator Spanton. We have Assemblyman Michael Riley. Um, we have Queens College. We have Nassau Community College. Uh, we have Sheeps at Bay College right now. And this is only the beginning right now. What's going to be happening moving forward? Senator Spanton is going to be meeting with Governor Hochul, who I know she's going to be very, very supportive to the programs that we're doing right now. And this is what it's all about, creating a pipeline giving an avenue for students to have when they want to build their future. And um, I'm very excited about it. And how do students tap into this initiative? How do students reach you? Well, they don't reach me right now. They reach out to their high school guidance counselors. And what we have right now is we have a program in place where they would reach out to their guidance counselors and the teachers that are teaching in their high schools, they're going to actually be certified by the college so they can actually teach the class in school. And they're going to be creating credits for that. And um, there's going to be a program in place right now in terms of getting the funding for students that hopefully it's not going to cost them anything, which is uh, which is nice. Can you imagine getting college credit in high school, a dual enrollment program? I I, I mean, basically, it's it, it's it's like a uh, a holiday present. It's it's exciting. Well, I think we met many 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 years ago when I was responsible for a program called College Now. That's right, and that provided opportunities for kids who are in college. But why did you make the decision that health was the area that you were going to focus on and that health is the area that our students needed to be engaged in? You know what? After COVID and the pandemic, I mean, it became so much so important that we need more doctors, we need more nurses, we need some people in the healthcare to work in nursing homes and some other areas right now. Healthcare is so prevalent and it's so important in our lives right now. Everyone's talking about healthcare, not having enough nurses, not having enough doctors to supply. You know what? It's scary, but as right now, we're giving students an opportunity to get into that field. And we're very fortunate right now to be involved with NYU Langone. I mean, they're unbelievable. And they have health clinics all around the city. And what's nice about this, Sam, is that we're looking to start in New York City, but then expand to New York State and create. And we also have Fairleigh Dickinson University in Jersey. We're looking to really make this nationwide. And it's so important because we're able to do it, especially myself being an educator. I have the connections with the people in in education, and I'm talking their language the same way that you're talking their language when it comes to uh, when it comes to communication. Okay, um, I'm curious about this Brooklyn Mobile Tech program in which you teach students how to fly drones. <laughs> what is this you know all what? about? 
you're like you're like a discovery man. It's funny you said that because that's exactly what I did last year in 2022. We actually we taught students how to fly drones in their gymnasiums. We connected with Biobus and Tony Reed. He's the um, drone pilot that created this program. You had to see this excitement in Brownsville with students, elementary school students, learning how to fly drones. You know, I had one experience that I'm going to share with you. I said, I went to one of the students. I said, yeah, you're having a good time. Do you like it? He says, I'm very, very sad. I said, really? Why are you sad? He said, because you're leaving. That, I mean, imagine this is like a third year old, a third grader mm -hmm. saying to you, you know what? I'm upset that you're leaving. We need more programs like this. It's, you know, amazing. We want to go to every school to do this. But right. that was something I worked on with the bio bus. But now yes. mm -hmm. I'm gearing my attention with the healthcare um, initiative and pipeline. Great, Great, you know job. Great job. I feel, I'm so right. excited about it. Uh, it and you ought to be excited. Uh, Scott, you provided a lot of information to our viewers. I want to thank you for being on Brooklyn 45 and uh, letting us know all about this educational pipeline initiative. And uh, we wish you success in everything that you do. Again, thanks for being on Brooklyn 45. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. We thank you for watching this program. We invite you to partner with Brooklyn 45. You can do this in many different ways. We are a registered 501c3 community television program. So when you support us with a gift, you gain tax benefits and or community benefits as well. So please tell your family, your friends, your colleagues to watch our Brooklyn 45 TV programs on cable television and on YouTube and to support us and be a part of what we do. On behalf of our Brooklyn 45 team, I am Sam Tate. Brooklyn 45 is a 501c3 not-for-profit, and we welcome your support. Check out our website, brooklyn45.com, and feel free to donate or share it with your friends and family. Have any comments or questions? Send them to our Facebook, facebook.com slash brooklyn45tv. If you have any questions or topics you think we should cover next, shoot me an email over at brooklyn45tv at gmail.com. Thank you again for watching.